Hi, everyone. My name is Greg Channon, and I am one of the tech leads on PyTorch. And I'm going to be talking about the new front end features available in PyTorch 1.3, or how name tensors and type promotion can simplify your PyTorch life. On the PyTorch front end, we're really guided by um, having the best user experience by focusing on expressivity and productivity. You see this from the beginning of PyTorch, where we focus on building a framework around writing programs, not manually building graphs. And if we apply this thinking to PyTorch today, to think, you know, how can we make PyTorch even more expressive and make using PyTorch even more productive? Uh, where can we make improvements? I think one area is around retaining semantic information. So today, users start with images, with text, with video. But as soon as you start doing PyTorch operations, we kind of force you to throw away that information and use an abstract mathematical object called the tensor. So the idea behind name tensor is super simple. It's to name dimensions. So if we take our image, we turn it into the typical uh, 3D tensor format. Instead of erasing what the dimensions mean, we're going to name them explicitly. So height with channel and HWC in this example. And this idea was proposed in a blog called Tensor Considered Harmful by Professor Sasha Rush, who's now at Cornell Tech. And we worked closely with Professor Rush on developing this name tensor feature. OK, so how does this look like? What does this look like in code? Today, you'll often see uh, tensor dimensions being named by comment. So here we set up a tensor, and then we name it uh, NCHW. And then when we access the dimensions, we access them by position. So here we are summing over the channels, and I know that because I can you know, refer back to the comment. And this is trivial in a two-line sli uh, two slide example, but in a real program with complex shape manipulation operations, this can be very onerous to track. So at its core, name tensors is a simple extension to the, uh, to the tensor API, which is just passing names explicitly. So here we pass the names of the dimensions as NCHW. And then I can access dimensions by name instead of by position. So here we're summing over the channels, just like we did on the left-hand side. And um, this is more readable because it's closer to our intent, right? I want to sum over the channels, and I don't want to sum over the first dimension. And it's also more maintainable because if my sh shape manipulation code changes, uh, the names are automatically propagated. And so if my channels end up in a different position, this code is resilient to those changes. OK, so that's a very high-level view of the API. Let's, I'm just going to go through a quick case study on image normalization. Here's a function from Torch Vision, which is normalizing the channels over a batch of images. And if you look at the implementation in Torch Vision, you'll see something like this, which is using none indexing. And if you're familiar with none indexing, essentially it's shifting the uh, dimension positions by one. This is pretty hard to read. It's pretty unintuitive because like, you can't reason from first principles what indexing a dimension by none means. Um, and it also has this other issue where there are many different formats, and if you if you manipulate dimensions by position, and you have different formats like NCHW, NHWC, et cetera, you have to have multiple normalization functions. And then you also have to be very careful because we type, essentially type erase what the dimensions mean, not to call uh, the wrong normalization function for your format. So how can we improve this situation? Um, we just use this nifty new a uh, function called align as. So same setup, but now we're going to say that all the tensors are named. And we're going to, again, subtract off the mean, divide off the standard deviation. But instead of using none indexing, we're going to call align as. So essentially what this does is shifts over the channel dimension of the mean to match wherever the channels are in the batch of images. So this is more readable than the, the none indexing, and it also works for all the different formats. So no matter where the channel's dimensions are positionally in the image, um, the channels will be just be shifted by name. And so I only need one normalization function, and I no longer need to worry about calling the right normalization function for my format. 
Okay, that's a super brief introduction to name tensors. It's considered experimental in version 1.3, but we would love if you tried it out and gave us feedback. Uh, the core functionality is in an eager mode. This basically means that the top-level torch operations are supported, have name propagation rules. Um, you can also mix named and unnamed tensors. This is a useful property so that you can add name tensors incrementally to your program. You don't have to do it all in one go. If this is interesting to you, there's a more in-depth tutorial online about supporting name tensors in multi-headed attention that just goes into a lot more detail. And in the future, we'll be expanding coverage to more of PyTorch. So this means uh, most of the NN package will be supported. We will propagate autograd names. Today, you can, um, you can run autograd on name tensors, but the gradients that come out are unnamed. And we'll do similar things for serialization, multiprocessing, distributed and JIT. OK, that was named tensors. I'm going to talk briefly about type promotion, which is just a nice quality of life improvement that we've added in version 1.3 um, around mixed D-type operations. So you may have seen or written PyTorch code like this in the past. Uh, this is just adding a Python number to a tensor. And this just works, even though the number is an integer and the tensor is floating point where right? PyTorch just handles this automatically for you. But in previous versions of PyTorch, if we tried to generalize this to tensors and replace the uh, integer number with an integer tensor, you would get an error that complained about d-type mismatch. So essentially, we've just uh, generalized this, this feature to tensors. Now, this will just work in 1.3. And it also works for all d-types. So that means that. You know, I showed an example of floating point tensors and integer tensors, but you can mix float32 and float64 tensors. And essentially, the type promotion system will just pick uh, the minimal D type that retains the fidelity of the data. So type promotion is available in 1.3. Arithmetic operations, comparison operations, and a number of other operations are supported. There's full documentation on the website about all the rules. Um, if for you NumPy fans out there, the rules are very similar to NumPy. Uh, we just made some slight tweaks to support our use case. And in the future, we'll be expanding coverage to the long tail of operators. Okay, that was a brief intro to name tensors and type promotion. We'd love for you to try them, give us feedback, uh, so we can tailor it uh, for your use case. And our hope here is really that Incorporating these features into your program will make PyTorch programs more readable, more maintainable, less error-prone, and ultimately that that makes writing PyTorch even more enjoyable than it is today. Right. Thank you. Thank you.